I'm gonna try to get the car started today. There's still a ton of stuff to do. Um, so first I'm going to get the trans, take it over to the workbench, and I'm gonna start getting that ready. And by the way, I painted the transmission yesterday. So let's take a look at the transformation. Unloading the Accord 5-speed trans and I started scrubbing it with some degreaser and I just kept scrubbing and spraying and then I pressure washed everything off. And it turned out okay. It's not in the best of shape but it was pretty much ready for paint at least so I started taping everything off that I didn't want painted and started spraying. The wind was terrible. Trans is all done. Installing the throwout bearing clutch fork. I got a new boot. Just making sure everything's lubed up, got it all installed, and the trans is looking pretty good, ready to go in the car. Won't be a eyesore in the engine bay. And then we'll take the engine out of the truck, put the two together, and we'll be ready to put it in the car. Okay, so I just heated up the crank and then the pilot pushing is over here in the freezer. So I'm trying to shrink this a little bit and expand the crank a little bit so it should go together super easy. Let's see how, let's see how it goes. I got the pilot pushing in there. Over here is the 11 pound flywheel, I think it is. And this is probably like half the weight of what the OEM flywheel for the K24A2 is. I think the original one's like 22 pounds. The K20A2s, however, I think they came with, or at least the JDM ones came with an 11 pound flywheel. That would be the K20A. Anyway, um, I also got some brand new flywheel bolts from Honda for, uh, the manual trans because this engine I have originally came with an automatic so that's why I had to install that pilot bushing and these ones are actually yeah they're actually a little shorter so if you're if you got an automatic k24 make sure you get some manual flywheel bolts Got the flywheel bolts on all torqued down, so I was marking them as I was torquing them just to make sure I didn't forget any. And now we're moving on to the clutch here. Clutch. Plate, so we'll wipe this down, make sure there's not any oil on it. And then it comes with a little tool here. Oh, that actually came with a pilot bushing. I didn't know that. Oh well. We got one in there now, so we'll wipe that down and then we can bolt it on. Okay, so just got the clutch, clutch on, torqued all the bolts. Um, now we're gonna, I'm gonna get the trans off the workbench over here and try to bolt it together. Okay, so got the trans on. Took some wiggling around. I didn't record it because it got a little, a little messy, but I held it in the back and my dad kind of rotated the crank around so it would slide right in. So I got a bracket to put back here, bracket for the trans mount. 
Uh, I might put the header on, I haven't decided yet. Then I'll probably put the slave cylinder on and then we'll be ready to put the engine in the car. Okay, so the engine is in. It was really hard to get all these mounts bolted up. <clears throat> Pretty much had to leave them all loose and just keep jiggling everything around until I was able to get all the bolts started and then tighten it all down. But the whole, it took probably an hour, maybe two hours to get that all bolted in. But yeah, I'm running it at the lower position and the oil pan clearance doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look too bad, so I'll probably leave it there. And it clears all the hood, so I don't have to trim anything. So where I'm at now is I just ran the engine harness wires down. And this is actually like, I probably need to, need to pull it out a little bit, but we'll, I'll try to, I'll try to get that situated. Um, and now I'm hooking up the alternator wire and then I'm gonna hook up the starter wire it needs to come off of that uh, splitter down there, that junction block. So once I hook those two up, once I hook those up, I can put the intake manifold back on. I can hook up the fuel line. Um, and then I, I think that's pretty much it. It should start then. I'll probably do the heater hoses, radiator, put the fluids in and it, it should start up. Okay, here's how it's looking. I just got the just got the starter wire finished up. And then here's how the wires are running. So this one's the alternator wire, so that runs oops. That runs up there. You can see it's already hooked up. And then the wires run under here. Right hug against the frame rail. And Starter wire runs to here, the alternator wire runs up to the fuse box. So you can see, going in the fuse box. So there we go, that's pretty much taken care of. Um, I'm gonna hook this one up, then I can put the intake manifold back on. Okay, charge harness is fully hooked up now. So here's how it looks from the top. Got the starter wire, alternator wire, and then everything's running under the frame rail and it comes up right here and goes in the fuse box. And there's the junction block right there. So um, I think I'm gonna take a look at, while well, I have the intake, this part of the intake manifold off. I'm gonna take a look at how the radiator hoses line up and everything. And then if all that looks good, I'll put the intake manifold on. Okay, so everything pretty much looks really good. I just have to trim up this layer right of your hose and it'll hook right up.
So that's the K-tuned header. Uh, I'm really, man, that fit is awesome. Yeah, I'm really happy with that fit. Let's look up here. Yeah, the quality in the fit of this header is excellent. Um, yeah, I, I, I haven't seen a single bad review about it, so that's why I got it. I've seen some questionable reviews about some of the other headers, but this one didn't see any bad reviews, and yeah, that is a really nice fit, so. Hopefully the rest of these also bolt up fine. Let's move to the top and finish bolting it down. Okay, so I've gotten quite a lot done here. First of all, got the fuel line hooked up so that runs around to the K-tuned rail. Second, got the vacuum line that runs back to the brake booster. Radiator's all in, all bolted down. We got the um, overflow tank and throttle cable as well. So the stock throttle cable actually works fine. So next, I have to figure out where the grounds go. I have a hybrid racing ground kit. I have to figure out where those go. Here's the header back here. And then I have to cut this, cut this fuel line right here to fit. So that goes back on that valve. And then the other three eighths fuel line I just have um, on here right now. It's not clamped down yet. It's a, it's a little, it doesn't really fit right. I think I need like a molded um, 45 degree or some type of bend in there. So I might have to get another line there. It, it looks, it will flow. It's just probably not gonna be that optimal. Um, so yeah, let me get that coolant line uh, trimmed up, get that all tucked away. And then I'll do some research on where to put the ground cables. And that is, uh, Got a little bit of mess over here because I've been working all day. Uh, but yeah, just these, it's just these three because I, I use the uh, Summit um, battery ground in the trunk, so I don't need that. Okay, so I'm about to stop. <clears throat> it's getting really late here. So I got the, I got the heater hose cut to length right there. The one that comes off the valve. I still have to get some, yeah, comes off the valve right there. I still need to get the clamps on, get them tightened down. Um, and then I started installing the grounds. So I got one ground down there, right there. And then I got another ground, right, Let's see if I can get it in the camera. Get it to focus right there. To, yeah, it's hard to see, but I got a ground. This is the ground right here. It runs to one of the timing cover bolts up to right here on the car. So I got the locations for the grounds. I was just checked a Honda article real quick. I'm gonna put one more on the block somewhere just to be safe. But yeah, hopefully tomorrow should start be able to start it up. And yeah, hopefully it starts.